One of the best parts of getting our Regent show out on the road is the opportunity for us to learn something more about the great campuses that make up the UW system. That's certainly true here in Milwaukee. This campus community is a very busy place, and here to tell us more about what's going on is Chancellor Mark Mone. Chancellor Mone? Thank you, Regent Milner. Um, good afternoon, Board of Regents, fellow colleagues across the UW system, faculty, staff, students, UW-Milwaukee. It's very difficult to follow uh, Regent Chuck Pruitt. Um, he's so eloquent, humorous, and, and uh, remarkably insightful, plus he made a lot of points. So I'll just say thank you and um, have a good afternoon. So, <laughs> all right, I'll take a little bit longer. Um, I, I would like to say, first of all, that each of our UW system institutions, um, on behalf of the leadership that we have represented here from all of our campuses, uh, each of them have remarkable and special qualities. They all have also tremendous significance for their respective regions as we all continue to pursue the Wisconsin idea relentlessly. I am delighted today to be able to share what is unique, what is important, what are some of the significant accomplishments of UWM under the title, Made in Milwaukee, Shaping the World. This afternoon, I'll talk about four different areas. I'll cover, first of all, our dual research and access mission and why those are important, particularly in this region of the state. I'll move on and talk about our path to becoming a research institution and the need to maintain it going forward. Third, I'll talk about student access and success, what is particularly unique about UWM in this region. And then I'll talk about how UW-Milwaukee contributes to Milwaukee's potential and Wisconsin as a whole. About two-thirds of the way into my talk, I'll ask President Tim Sheehy from the Milwaukee Metro so Metropolitan Association of Commerce to offer his comments and perspectives on some of the aspects of our access and research mission and what we mean to the community. To begin, I'll start with a little bit of history. Some of you know this, but many of you may not. This is a picture of Mitchell Hall, one of the mainstays of our campus in 1956. A merger with the Milwaukee Extension Center in 1956 marked when the Regents officially sanctioned UWM as a doctoral research university. It was unique in the University of Wisconsin system to have a research university in the largest metropolitan area in the state. There's an important thread that's woven throughout our history. It's singularly unique. We have shifted, we have morphed, we have expanded because the region and state needed something more and we needed to transform. This important point is critical when we think about this. When needs have arisen in the region, in the state, and in the country, UWM has delivered. We have this dual mission. It's research and access. I like to think of it as a central mission, research and access. We're the state's only public urban research university, and we're distinguished because of our access mission. We serve the largest population in the urban center of the state. It's foundational and it's critically important. I'll say that theme over and over again. It needs to be stressed. It allows me to now share with that foundation one of the accomplishments, some of the accomplishments that we've made in both of these areas, but also why they're both important and essential for this region and our state's vitality. It also will allow me to position and discuss what's needed for us to enable success in both these areas in the future. I'll start with research and ask you to take a look at this video, which shares some of the highlights, just a small sample of some of the remarkable things that we do on this campus every day. UWM, there's research happening on every school, every college, every department. I mean, this is a broad-based research university, which is what the Carnegie Arwen designation means. This is a recognition of the research efforts we have put in for the last decades. You know, it's not happening overnight. It shows that the institution is headed in a direction where we really contribute to the forefront of knowledge. Our Research One designation, along with the Carnegie classification, is emblematic of who we are as an institution. Being an R1 institution will help us in recruiting top students. 
to come to UWM, also in receiving research funding. When I first came, there was a nucleus of faculty doing research that eventually grew, and I'm very gratified by the fact that now uh, my work and the work of the others here have helped us to gain our one status. The research we do pushes the frontiers of physics and astronomy. The highlight of my career thus far is definitely the discovery of gravitational waves. Gravitational waves discovery opens a whole new field of astronomy in a sense. We announced the first observation of gravitational waves from a pair of black holes that collided out in the universe 1.3 billion light years from Earth. So that, you know, is really an important development for which no doubt there'll be a Nobel Prize awarded. Without Leonard, we, we wouldn't have um, such a fantastic group here. I figured I'd be long gone by the time LIGO was able to, to actually, you know, detect these things. My research is really literally all over the map, and now I'm a historian of the world. I was the editor-in-chief of a nine-volume Cambridge World History. Just came out last year. We'd worked on it for almost 10 years. One of the reasons that I was really pleased to see that Cambridge University Press came here is that I think that it's a global recognition uh, by the top of the academic heap that there is excellent research going on here at UWM. My research uh, looks at the intersection of race and law. It has a lot to teach us about the history of where our problems with race come from and also why we still have lingering problems. In 2010 I began to work with America's Black Holocaust Museum. Even though the museum had closed, there was still a very uh, important group of folks who were going to make sure that the institution itself and the importance of the institution remained vibrant in the Milwaukee community. America's Black Holocaust Virtual Museum is important because now we reach an international audience. We performed a series of validation studies in a laboratory one of the most rewarding aspects of this um, whole process was that students were working together and they developed a product that's now on the market. The range that we designed has very unique features that make it safer and easier for workers to use. In my field of occupational injury prevention, we scientists try to find ways to save people's lives, prevent injuries and make work easier. A few years ago when we invented this sensing platform, we understand there's a uh, significant need in real-time detection of different contaminants in water. Many of the pipelines we have in the U.S. still contain lead. If you don't have a real-time sensor to monitor the water quality, then our human being will become the sensors, which is the last thing you wanted to see. There are also biomedical applications of these sensors. For example, we currently are working on the detection of Ebola virus and acid reflux using the same platform. We're aiming at some of the larger scale societal problems to, uh, to address, but once solved, those solutions can have a significant impact on our society. I just love the fact that when you talk to faculty and staff across campus, you get that diversity of activity that is contributing to the forefront of research and scholarship. The thing that's kept me here at UWM the most, it's now more than three decades, is a feeling that I have that I'm making a difference in students' lives. We stand here as a, as a bastion for educating uh, the people of the city. As long as the adequate funding can be obtained, the future is limitless. UW-Milwaukee is one of the most important and significant urban research institutions in the country. We merge high-level research and community engagement as best as any school in the country. So I,
I think that video gives you an appreciation for the title of my talk, which is truly Made in Milwaukee, Shaping the World. Life-changing, economic development, human condition, a number of different aspects that are affected by that. And I must tell you, I remain in awe of our faculty, our staff, and students, which I will talk much more about later. They are truly among the best in the world. You've heard earlier about the momentous R1 Research One designation we received and the scale of what that means. We were honored to have Presidents Milner and Cross, along with Regent Hall, come and join us for our celebration about a month ago on campus. It was one of the most joyous events in the history of this campus, one of the most important achievements we have, we have been recognized for. This places us as one of 115 universities in the country out of 4,665, the top 2% of research universities. This has been built upon decades of work. It's, we've achieved this pinnacle because of long-standing commitment to become a top-tier research university. In fact, in 1965, we had only one doctoral program, and we didn't have a doctoral graduate at that point. Today, in 2015, we have 33 different doctoral programs, and we put out about 250 doctoral students a year, which is a critical component of the R1 research designation. It really speaks to the quality and the impact of our faculty, and importantly, what happens here, what happens in the classroom, what happens in laboratories, what happens in the community as a result of the applied and engaged types of research, as well as the fundamental basic research that we do. It also speaks to the economic driver, not just in terms of the federal funds that are, are uh, coming into this area, um, in terms of, of the millions of dollars and the expenditures that we make, but really the types of partnerships that I'll also speak about later. More broadly, I often pose the question, what does our, what does our research one designation mean? And I'll jump to this slide, which, um, speaks to the funding. These are, these are a few of the examples. I won't go through each one of these. Uh, many of these were captured in terms of some of the, the comments that were made in the videos by some of our star professors. Um, but I'd like to underscore some of the themes that, that really are depicted by the work that's done in physics. In the middle of the picture, you can see the, the uh, Professor Sandra McClelland in, in uh, Haiti working on, after the earthquake, some of the, the uh, low cost but important filtration, uh, water filtration uh, applications, some work that we, we recognize in the bottom with our, our um, student research types of activities. So, so there's many other examples going on. But the point of these is that public research universities like UW-Milwaukee introduce vital research and innovation. It's this discovery around human, scientific, and technological applications that's critically important to the world. These programs have national and international recognition. They produce discoveries and this new knowledge. We can talk about the work in physics. We can talk about nanoparticles. We can talk about the discovery of more effective drugs, sensor technology, ergonomics and economics, geopolitics, and a number of other areas. I like to relate those to every day there's newspaper headlines, newspaper headlines that talk about the challenges and the issues that are facing us. In the Great Lakes earlier this week, there, were, there was articles about ballast uh, issues with contaminants coming into the Great Lakes. Our sensors are being developed to help achieve low cost and much quicker development and detection of, of uh, uh, contaminants. We saw in the video a number of things that sensors are being applied to. Um, in the last several weeks, there have been multiple articles talking about Wisconsin's place in economic development regarding entrepreneurship, business startups, job growth creation. We are an engine for that, not just because of our students, but because of a lot of the research that's conducted. So I could give you application after application, world changing, region changing, and of course, life changing. So these innovations, as you've seen, can be commercialized, patented, turned into applications in so many different areas that benefit individuals, societies, and our partners. The snap-on wrench that you saw a little bit in the video, energy storage with Johnson Controls, work in imaging and a number of areas with GE Healthcare, the list goes on and on. The other thing that it does is it enables us to provide our students with a unique 
quality experience. We know that research, especially for undergraduates, is one of the most effective high-impact learning practices, but also an important tool for retention. It provides remarkable opportunities, and that's a good segue for me to talk a little bit more about the students, but let's talk first about what is the student profile at UWM. As I mentioned earlier, each of our campuses is unique. Some of these statistics you might be familiar with, but I would guess in aggregate, there's some things that you didn't know about UWM. Our total enrollment is 27,156. We have, as identified, those who get GI benefits, almost 1,100, which represents not only almost twice the number in the state, but it's more than any in a six-state region. We're also recognized consistently, not just as a Pat Tillman military veteran-friendly institute, but we're one of the very few institutions that has full-time on-site VA uh, staff member who helps with a lot of the transitions that veterans make into school, out of the military, and also into the workforce. Of the number of total students, 22,000 are undergraduates. We, uh, you can see some of the other uh, markers there, 28% students of color, almost 9,000 first generation, one of the top universities in the country for LGBT+, and a number in our Honors College. So there's a number of remarkable attributes of our students. To tell you a little bit more about our students, let's watch this video. <laughs> When I first got to Milwaukee, uh, I was terrified. I didn't know anybody. I was really shy. UWM really brought me out of my shell. I love that it's one of the most military-friendly campuses. I see fellow military members, and I like that we have kind of a camaraderie on campus. I'm really proud that I can serve my country. The sport and rec department offered jiu-jitsu and mixed martial arts, so I decided why not try it while I'm here? I absolutely fell in love with the sport. Winning my first fight, the experience was amazing, and as soon as I walked out of the cage, I knew for sure that this is what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. Graduation means a lot to me because I am the first person in my immediate family to graduate from college with the military, and it means a lot that I was able to accomplish two majors. UWM has been the place that has really transformed me from the young, shy 18-year-old into the adult airman, professional athlete, and role model I am today. Good to be alive, right about now. Good, good, good. Over up to page two. What I really love like about the idea of being a teacher, it's those small moments where you're helping out a student and they finally get it. That's definitely the most rewarding thing. I'm a secondary education major at the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee. My expectation is I'll find a job in MPS. I grew up going to MPS schools all my life, so I guess I kind of feel like this is a way I can maybe give back to the community that I was raised in. You know, I was for a long time working 40 hours a week, paying for a lot of schooling myself. Scholarships makes this whole experience possible for a lot of people. And it provides the type of assistance that is necessary to allow people to pursue some of these higher goals that they have. For me, graduating, it represents being able to do something not only that I think I can do well, but something I can enjoy. It's good to be alive right about now. Good, 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 good to be alive right about now. My name is Alexis Nash. I am a UWM Student Startup Challenge winner, and I'm the founder of Pop Space. I knew that for me, I needed to create an opportunity for myself. Knowing about the UWM Startup Challenge, I went ahead and pitched an idea to them that I thought would help other entrepreneurs like myself. Milwaukee has a lot of underutilized spaces. Giving entrepreneurs access to those spaces in order to increase their uh, presence among customers, among their market, um, I felt was beneficial to them growing their their business. And so I pitched that idea to the UWM Startup Challenge. They thought it was a really great idea and then I became one of nine winners. But I didn't really know how I was going to get it off the ground because I had no previous experience in this area. So they really helped coach me through that. I think over the past year I've learned to just put the pedal to the metal, just go out there, hit the pavement and just, and just do it.
Well, let's hear it for our students. You know, those are three students, but I have to tell you, there are, there are um, just a remarkable number, 27,000 plus, that we get to work with every day. And it's remarkable from an employer perspective as well as where our students go in so many facets of life. We have a work ethic and we have a remarkable, remarkably capable student body and it's just an honor to be able to serve th these students. And, and I always say in education what we do, and I, I think you appreciate this, Regents, that, that it's truly a noble work that we do to, to, to really um, help this transformation and, and see this. The first story, Aaliyah, just a little bit more. Uh, Leah Letson, who is the double major, she joined us at lunch today. Um, she told me, um, not only did, did she talk about this is her new career. She served seven years in the Air Force. She's in the National Guard. She'll be deployed next year. But her future is about MMA. She's mixed martial arts. She's become a tournament champion. We're going to see her go a long way. It's really neat to see her uh, in that transformation and just, just an amazing, amazing story on, on so many different levels. So, Given the student background, the financial profile that again continues to show the unique aspects at UW-Milwaukee, you can see some of the statistics here and, and really um, what we have to, to really work to, to make sure we ensure success around with an urban population. This is um, uh, what, we, what we deal with every day in terms of financial advising and the, the types of resources that we need to provide and continue to provide for continued student success. I ask you to think about the scale and what's at stake and what's at risk here in, in the context of if we have 5,300 graduates a year, in the context of what Tim Sheehy is going to talk about, thinking about the labor pipeline and then, of course, building on the research partnerships, what really is, is critically important for the future. So to ensure the success of our students with the access mission that we have, there's a number of things that we do at UW-Milwaukee. I think it's fair to say many of our institutions do many of the same types of things. We have, we have across all of our schools and colleges, and we have 12 at UWM, we have high quality education, we have high impact learning opportunities. The qualities that I look at when we look at what is important for student success usually fall into retention and graduation, preparation for life after college, and the quality of the experience that happens while you're here. We pride ourselves in our teaching quality, the types of educational aspects. We also have many, and a part of this is because of our location, but a lot of it is our approach. It's the real world learning and professional development opportunities through internships, through co-ops, through a lot of different partnerships that we have. We also have developed over the last five years a dramatic number of living learning communities. In many areas, we have so much demand that we've got multiple living com learning communities in, in the same areas. We have a lot of research opportunities, as I've alluded to earlier, for both our undergraduates and graduates. This is what happens with our research one status, that we can provide those types of applications, although many of our UW institutions engage students in research as well. One of the challenges that you've heard about if you're at the Education Committee meeting this morning was the work that we have been doing on remediation. And I'd like to just give you a bit of a snapshot that's, that's way too busy, so I'm not going to go through all the details. But I'd like to draw out some key points from this and draw some very practical examples. We initiated, working with the UW colleges, a partnership on math reform. This is transformational, and we are now seen as a national model. Let me just fast forward to the bottom line and tell you what this means. In 2012, 27% of our low achieving students who started math, only 27% completed in their first year basic math remediation courses. As a result of our math transformation two years later, so we started this as a pilot, and if you were at the Regents meeting two years ago in Stevens Point, you heard some of the initial pilot work by Dr. F Dr. Kyle Swanson and Dr. Phyllis King, who came and presented that. Today, what we can say is that 77%, this is a factor of three times as many students achieve math competency at the end of their first year. There's nothing, nothing like that anywhere else that we have seen that has achieved that. It hasn't been easy, and this is not teaching a single course differently. It's a significant undertaking. It's hugely 
hugely successful, but it hasn't been easy. And the need for us to continue uh, to be able to do this is going to require continued investment, and it's going to continue required uh, attention to this in a lot of, lot of different areas. More broadly, what this means is that students are achieving more credits toward degree faster, they're graduating more quickly, and it's costing them less. This is also something that we started in math, but will scale to our English reading and writing programs as well. So it has huge, huge um, implications for the types of things that we know are critical for student access and success. There's one other piece that we pride ourselves on that's new, the development of our Lubar Center for Entrepreneurship. We spent a fair amount of time and had David Lubar, the president of Lubar and Company, join us this morning for the Research, Economic Development, Innovation Program, where he, I, and our Lubar Center director, uh, talked, Brian Thompson, talked about this in much more detail, but I will just stay at a, at a summary level and tell you that this new center, which is enabled by a gift from the Lubar family and a match from UW System in terms of the physical capital side of this, which will also house our Welcome Center, has the potential to be transformational for the region, not just in terms of what students learn across all our schools and colleges for business growth and startup, but existing employers today want students to be more innovative, more able to engage, critical thinking, foundation of what we provide, both in a liberal arts classical education as well as the particular areas in which students major. But we are able to expose them to a lot of hands-on ideas through a whole array of programs that are housed and really prompted and promoted by the Lubar Center for Entrepreneurship. Where does this lead us? Where does this take us? Well, a few different levels. First, at the national and sometimes global level, we have a number of alumni who've gone on and had some remarkable impact. Satya Nadella, CEO of Microsoft. Beth Pritchard, former CEO of Bath and Body Works. Frank Caliendo, um, the uh, Mad TV and, and uh, NFL uh, impersonator in a number of different areas. Michelle Gravener, who curated the Whitney Museum. Jim Reichel, three-time Oscar award winner, featured film uh, uh, special effects for probably 40 major films and, and additional, uh, uh, quite a few uh, others. Maggie Rakowski. Maggie's role is, um, she's one of only two female Navy admirals. Fewer than 90 women have achieved that distinction ever promoted to admiral, and she was the first US Nurse Corps officer to be named fleet surgeon. These individuals give back in remarkable ways. Last night, I was emailing Gail Clapa, who's the uh, recently retired president and CEO of We Energies. Gail is an alumni of, of uh, our College of Letters and Science and Communication, also received an honorary doctor from UWM. I was congratulating him for being named CEO of the year from Business World Magazine. And it started me, just, just, it just occurred to me, what are some of the other local areas in which our alumni have gone? And it became an alphabet soup. I just had a little fun with it. You can think of WE Energies, WE, ARCW, AIDS Resource Center of Wisconsin. Um, one of our graduates is the president today of, of, of that. Northwestern Mutual, Ed Zora, a double graduate, was the president and CEO. Rockwell Automation, Keith Nosbush, graduate of UWM, Lubar School. Blood Center of Wisconsin, Jackie Frederick, Lou Bar School, Harley Davidson, Jim Seamer, uh, a graduate, St. Anthony's, one of our distinguished colleagues here, with uh, um, Jose Vasquez as uh, one of our graduates, MATC, Vicki Martin, one of our graduates. You see where I'm going here? University, or I'm sorry, United Community Center, Ricardo Diaz, a graduate, and the African American Chamber of Wisconsin, Dr. Eve Hall, one of our graduates. So it's a remarkable, remarkable with um, just off the top of my head, and we could keep going and going. But it's not just at the executive level, it's not just prominent, innovative, important companies that we lead. It's how we fill the talent pipeline. It's 170,000 graduates from UWM, 74% of whom have stayed in this region and make a difference as accountants, as chemists, as historians, as, actuant, as, as um, actuarial, as librarians, as marketers, as economists, police officers, social workers, artists, and architects. The list goes on and on. If Stan Stojkovic were here, he would tell you that we have more police chiefs in the state of Wisconsin than from any other campus. And we could go through and through and talk about nursing and engineering, remarkable uh, areas. And what that leads to then is the idea that we have a history and legacy on the one hand 
of what I call our talent collaboration. We're focusing today one of our signature events, and we had last year Darian Driver, the superintendent of Milwaukee Public Schools, Vicki Martin, the president of MATC, and myself do a presentation on what we call M cubed. M cubed is not an accidental name, it's deliberately meant to be exponential, talking about the power of the three of us working together. We represent 143,000 students in public education in the state. There's no other combination that is as large nor as meaningful in terms of the pipeline from the talent side. What that leads to then is these types of organizations, and there's hundreds of them, if not thousands, that really are impacted in this way. But if you think about some of the larger names you see in healthcare organizations such as the Blood Center of Wisconsin and the Medical College of Wisconsin, in manufacturing, your Briggs and Stratton, GE Healthcare, Johnson Controls and Rockwell, community engagement, Silver Spring Neighborhood Center, and so forth. Really, really a number of different types of partnerships. That's what happens when you take a research one university, a success, student success and access goal and really talk about how do we engage the partnerships and make that, that uh, significant difference. With that portion done, I'd ask Tim Sheehy, who's the president of Milwaukee Metro Association of Commerce, to provide his perspectives. Tim is the president of MMAC. MMAC serves 300,000 employees in this region through hundreds of leading organizations. One of Tim's signature events that he's continued to work on is what's called the Blueprint for, Blueprint for Economic Prosperity. The MMAC talks an awful lot about economic development, and Tim is intimately involved with work with K-12, higher education, and a number of other workforce areas. Tim is a graduate of UW-Madison, one of the stars of their baseball team in a different era when they had Division I baseball, and he's a huge supporter of everything that is UW system. Tim. Uh, good evening, or good afternoon. Uh, welcome to Milwaukee. Mark, I appreciate the reference on baseball, but I played when I don't even think Mitts had webbing in them, so you could take that for what it's worth. Um, I would like to just start by acknowledging Mark, though. Um, we're thrilled professionally to have Mark as uh, Chancellor of UWM. I think he's the right person at the right time. Uh, and personally, I'm thrilled. Uh, Mark was a neighbor of mine for 25 years, and I'm so happy he found good public housing. So, um, but again, uh, I, I think the right person at the right time to, to lead this university. So I, I'm not up here, though, today because I was Mark's neighbor for 25 years. I, I just wanted to take a couple minutes uh, and talk to you about why the mission of UWM and why the mission of the UW system is so important uh, to economic development here in southeastern Wisconsin uh, and to uh, economic development uh, in the entire state. So um, if you think about it, and I know you have a lot of drama at your meetings, so I'm not going to add to that, uh, but I do want to provoke some thoughts here by talking about uh, why um, this is so important and why the mission of UWM is so important. Uh, we're in what I think is an unprecedented global war for talent. And, and the reason I say that is, uh, in the 30 years I've been in my job, um, I've been exposed to a lot of companies, and, and I've never seen a time when the economy is as unpredictable, uh, when it's changed so fast and so rapidly as the time that we're living in today. And, and so talent is so important because it is the best offense and the best defense in an economy that, as I said, is more volatile and less predictable than in any time that we've seen. Um, you can't look around the corner and predict the disruptions in careers, the disruption by technology, or the disruption in markets. They come so fast, uh, and they come from places that we don't expect them. So as I said, the best offense and the best defense is talent, and that's why there's a war for it globally. We need a vibrant UW system to provide that talent, and we need a vibrant UWM in that system to help Milwaukee in this global war for talent. Um, I think about this, as Mark said, through the lens of our members 
who employ about 300,000 people here in southeastern Wisconsin and probably more than a million across the globe uh, as they try to compete uh, in a, a rapidly changing world. I think about it from the perspective I spent the last two days. Uh, I'm one of six trustees for the State of Wisconsin Investment Board, and I see the challenges that we have in deploying the $100 billion uh, a, a year that we have to try to get a return on that uh, and how challenging and volatile that is for the professionals that, that do that. Um, and, and, and let me just talk about three things as I close here. One is, what drives growth? I talked about the unpredictable nature of the economy that we're all dealing with, but what drives growth for southeastern Wisconsin? In fact, what drives growth for any region in the state of Wisconsin? It's really simple. We have to pay really close attention to the companies that are in our area that export their goods or services outside the region. If you think about it, that is the only way you get new growth and you get net new income. So companies, small or large, that have few, if any, customers here export a good or service outside the region. In southeastern Wisconsin, we have about a million jobs. 275,000 of those one million jobs are in companies that do that. They export a good or service outside the region. Those 275,000 jobs create another 325,000 jobs here in companies that are supplying goods or services to those exporters. And the spending of those 600,000 jobs create the other 400,000 jobs, right? Education, healthcare, transportation, where do I eat? Where do I go see a movie? And so if we don't get it right, if we're not supplying the talent, if we're not supplying the leadership, if we're not creating the entrepreneurs who are going to export goods and services outside the region, we don't see job growth in this state and we don't see job growth in this region. I was reminded of that driving up here today. Um, I stopped at the light uh, right beneath the new Northwestern Mutual $500 million, $1 million uh, square foot uh, office tower that's being built, and there were hundreds of construction workers out there on their lunch break. So think about the graduates from UWM in their actuarial sciences program, uh, in their finance department, in their marketing department, uh, and as Mark mentioned recently, running the company. The talent that UWM produces to help Northwestern Mutual manage other people's money is what creates the opportunity for that company to grow and create all those jobs for those folks in the construction industry uh, that I saw on their lunch break at noon. So it's critically important that we provide the talent to those clusters, whether it's food and beverage, power automation and controls, or finance. Uh, we've got to make sure that we never lose sight of the importance of that type of industry and those kinds of jobs uh, to our economy. Uh, the next part about this is population trends, and universities are great at seeing this. I know the challenges with declining enrollment due to, due, due to fewer kids, but this is poignantly important to Wisconsin and to southeastern Wisconsin. The advanced economies of the world for the first time since 1950 are seeing a decline in their working age population. Let me say that once again. The, all the advanced economies in the world are seeing a decline in their working age population for the first time since 1950. Europe is declining at 20 to 25 percent, Japan at close to 30 percent, Russia and China at 20 percent. Even fast growing markets like Brazil are going to grow only at an anemic pace of about 3 percent over the next 50 years. You bring that closer to home to the United States. From 1950 to 2000, the working age population in the United States grew by 127%. Between 2000 and 2050, the working age population in the United States will grow by only 36%. Everybody is going to be looking for talent to fuel on an offensive nature and a defensive nature their companies. If you look closer at home in southeastern Wisconsin, by 2023, we're predicting a little over 104,000 job openings, either due to retirements or to modest economic growth. During that same period of time, we're going to see 6,000 fewer people in our working age between 15 and 64. So we've got 100,000 raw job openings just due to demographics. Which brings me to my conclusion, Mark, in terms of UWM's role. When I think about UWM, I think of it on the spectrum of ideas to jobs. We need the university here to help populate 
uh, new opportunities, new ideas, new research, new companies, new people to run those companies, and we need those folks to come out and fuel the jobs that are going to be open and the jobs that are going to be created. And we need to do it in a way that, that is inclusive, that brings everybody to the table. And I don't say this as a statistic to pick on my alma, alma mater, just to make the point. Of the 30,000 undergraduate students at UW-Madison, 600 of the 30,000 are African American. We've got to do a better job of preparing kids to go to two-year and four-year institutions, but we've got to pay particular attention to universities like UWM that are that bridge for the future that we're going to be all, that, that we're all going to create. So it's my pleasure to share some of my thoughts today with you. I appreciate the work that you all do uh, as regents. It's vitally important to our economic success um, and continue to keep your eye on UWM. Thank you. Tim, thank you. And, and one of the reasons I think Tim is most delighted I'm in this role is that I'm out of his neighborhood. So, so uh, very good. <laughs> um, so those are important perspectives. And I'd like to, to reinforce this idea about not just job preparedness today, but what we do at UWM that's particularly important, and most of our UW system institutions excel at this, is provide that foundation in, in critical thinking, broader perspectives, social sciences, liberal arts. Reason why that's important is that if you look at Bureau of Labor Statistics and Department of Labor, we're looking at the prediction right now that most individuals graduating from college will have between a dozen and 15 different jobs over the course of their careers, which means you've got to be agile, you've got to be ready to think about what are the needs of the future as opposed to just thinking about what is tomorrow's job. So in recent uh, times, including yesterday, you can see where Senator Darling was one person who underscored this point as well. Her op-ed yesterday that appeared in the Journal Sentinel was titled, UWM Research Helps Wisconsin Thrive. We've been fortunate to have Senator Darling on our campus, seeing different parts of, of the uh, work that we do with our students, with our faculty, in a number of different areas over the last several years. And she points out, one of the quotes is, there's a good chance that the next big idea will also come from UWM, really underscoring your comments, Tim, about where do those new ideas come from? Where are the companies likely to be sparked? What is that innovation? She focused an awful lot on some of the work that's done in, in engineering and research and water and, and other areas, like you've seen in terms of some of the features today. From the other side of the aisle, on April 29th, Representative Dan Reamer wrote an article titled, UWM is Key to Milwaukee's Urban Revival. This was in the Journal Sentinel a month and a, a couple of weeks ago. And what he was able to focus on, because of his knowledge of UWM, is the vital work that we're doing in different neighborhoods, the types of things that we do in social welfare, in nursing, in a number of health applications, as well as in, in uh, uh, a variety of different fields that are, that are uh, engaged in Milwaukee. So we see this on both sides, and we recognize the importance of, of uh, the work that we're doing. Pulling these ideas together, as just a quick comment, over the last decade, we have seen uh, significant growth in terms of the discovery and applications leading to talent commercialization. We've really strengthened our culture of entrepreneurship, and we expect a lot more of that in the future. And the talent, in terms of the pipeline, has just continued to grow in terms of the number of students who come from UWM and stay in the state. As we look to move forward, there are some challenges that the campus faces, and we have plans and actions underway to address those. The main things that we're doing is, first of all, to focus and continue to say, how do we maintain our status on the path to, to looking at when we are renewed again for Research One status, how will we ensure that we have that? How do we continue to focus on access and student success through our engagement and the types of things that I've talked about? So with those as a focus, we have been engaging as we've looked at some of the impact of the budget cuts and some of the commitments that we have made without some of the initial funding that we uh, were going to have to address our future. They really, without going through all the detail, fall into three different buckets. The first one is around administrative efficiencies. The second is in terms of academic realignment. And the third area is what we call strategic position control, looking to balance the budget, address cuts, and continue the quest for additional revenue sources. 
Region support has been and will continue to be one of the most critical determinants of our ability to uphold and fulfill this. We very much appreciate everything the regents have done, and we would ask and plea for uh, continued support to be able to make the difference that we have been making uh, for many, many years. It's critical. The potential of Milwaukee and why your support is so important comes down to these three pictures represent the relationship between University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee, Milwaukee, and the state of Wisconsin. I call this a triadic relationship. And let me develop this a little bit further as I wrap up here. As we know, for any region to thrive, it must have strong public research universities. The current and future economic and educational investments in this region will determine whether metropolitan Milwaukee will thrive or decline in the future. I think, Tim, you'd agree with me in your position that we're at a turning point right now. We absolutely are at a turning point. You heard Tim talk about 110,000 positions by 2023 that we will need, we will need talent for. There's that side. There's the, the ability for this region to compete with other regional economic centers, not just in the United States, but really across the globe. If you think about the regions that do thrive, what is the heartthrob? What is the thing that really makes that engine go? We have seen deliberate choices in Denver, in Minneapolis, St. Paul, in Pittsburgh. If you go to Seattle, today where you see the construction booms going, those are not accidental results. Those are usually the basis of something that has happened because of collaborative municipalities working with higher education and a focus on industry that is going to make a big difference in the future. I won't name cities that have made some of the wrong choices. I can use that word because I'm not going to say the cities, but they have not made the right types of choices. And they have been challenged and there is incredible tension in those cities, and they continue to make the headlines, often for the wrong reasons. We have a remarkable opportunity to keep Milwaukee going positive, and by so doing, keeping the state strong. We know that we're essential to the economic health and social well-being, not just of the city, not just of the region, but really the state and much beyond that. We're uniquely positioned. We serve that diverse cross-section of students, and we're committed to Wisconsin and have been for at least 60 years. This year, the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee celebrates 60 years. Many of our schools and colleges actually started in 1966, so they're in their 50 years. But I can also reach back deeper in history. I was having a conversation with Alan Shoho yesterday about the School of Education, and I said, when is your 50th coming up? Because we've been having all these celebrations. He said, Mark, We've been around, I think this is year 126 for us. And I'm like, OK. So they go back to 1885. And um, that just shows the history of what had been UWM. So here's what we know. The stronger and more vigorous this city and this region, the stronger and more vigorous is the state. And UWM provides that foundation. This is a triadic relationship, as you see in the picture here, between UWM, Milwaukee, and the state. And it's imperative that UWM continue to operate at an even higher level. I would argue and continue to maintain that UWM is one of the best investments that the state and UW system can make. We have a huge ROI for Wisconsin students, families, and taxpayers. My last slide is a picture of what we're here and what we're all about, what we're here for and all about. These are three of our students from among the 5,300 that graduated this last year and they say it all. We did it, and we like to say it's a wonderful, honorable, and noble partnership that we have. Thank you for your support and for being here today. Thank you, thank you Chancellor Mone, and, and thank you, Tim. Uh, are there any questions or comments for Chancellor Mone now, or for Mr. Shia, Mr. Shee? Tim, do you want to join us back at the podium? Are there any questions for them at this point? Well, I'd like to make a comment if anyone is thinking about a question. Uh, we have said, both President Cross and I and regents around this table have said that Milwaukee's uh, economic growth and strength and health as a community is critical to the state of Wisconsin, and UW-Milwaukee is in a perfect position to do that. 
So we, uh, we commend you for the work that you're doing. The message of needing workers is something that we heard of at UW-Green Bay. It's something that we're hearing today, and I'm sure it's something that we're going to hear in Eau Claire when we go to Eau Claire. It's a critical state issue. So thank you very much for weighing in on this. Any other questions or comments? Well, again, thank you, and uh, we will move on in our meeting. Thank, thank you very much. You.